Hello and welcome to FinTech Impact. I'm your host, Jason Pereira. Today on the show, I have Natesh Verma, Director of Marketing and Enterprise Solutions at Advisor Websites. Advisor Websites is a platform that enables financial advisors to publish beautiful and compliant websites. And with that, here's my interview with Natesh. Hello, Natesh. Hey, Jason. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for joining me. So, Natesh Verma of Advisor Websites, tell us about Advisor Websites. Absolutely. So, we are a website building company and we specifically work with financial advisors in the US and Canada. So, we have a proprietary platform uh, with compliance and built to help advisors market themselves online. Excellent. So, tell us about the history of um, Advisor Websites and what was the origin of it and what caused it, what problems it trying to solve. Yeah. yeah, so our two co-founders, they had a digital marketing agency back in the day about 10 plus years ago. And it was it was a full service marketing agency and they built a lot of one-up websites for larger organizations, um, you know, the liquor board, uh, some retail outlets, things like that. And a friend of theirs, uh, he's like, hey, I need, I'm an advisor, I need a website. And built one and he showed it around to some of the other advisors in his uh, organization and they were like, oh, I want one too. And there was a real demand for this. So they ended up take, uh, going a bit of a road show through Canada to different offices and tons and tons of traction and people signed up and they ended up selling off their their full more full service digital marketing practice and created advisor websites. And now for the past 10 years plus, that's been the sole focus. It's been great. We have a we have a lot of clients in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Actually, more of our business comes uh, from U.S.-based advisors who are part of broker dealers, and we work with well over a hundred of them. Really? So it's the broker dealer market more versus the IRA market. It's massively the broker dealer market, mm-hmm. and the main reason is our platform uh, has an inbuilt compliance system to it. So if you're an advisor in the U.S. and even Canada, you have to get uh, approval. You have to get approval. So we have we have that as part of our platform that's inbuilt into it. So if, you, if you're with these advisors, you have to essentially in a lot of cases uh, work with someone like us uh, that has that compliance system in place. So that's that's how our bread and butter you is. You have no choice. Essentially. Compliance yeah. loves to rule the world as we know. Well, it's, you know, they're there for a reason. Yep. Uh, we can debate the fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. It's fun. It's uh, funny, though, like we do work with like RAs or more independent ones. Yes. And, and they still have, you know, they have free reigns. Essentially, they could go build it with whoever they want. They could get one of their client's kids to do it for, yeah. all, for all that matters. But at the end of the day, they still prefer the expertise and, and that, you know, that knowledge we have of the industry. Mm-hmm. I think we speak their language. It just works for them, too. So there's tons of value that way as well. So effectively, what you built is a... Squarespace or Wix, but specifically for the financial services bang, industry. Bang on. There you go. Yeah. With the back yeah. end, of course, being yep. compliance. Yeah. The added value stuff it comes from, you know, our ongoing support, our offering, you get content so you can continuously update your website. It gets auto published. We have social media as part of it. We do add on things like SEO, logo design, content writing. We, you know, we have that kind of full suite of digital marketing coming down the pipeline uh, by the end of the year is going to be an email newsletter offering as part of the platform as well. So then that really, you know, touches the three main ones, web, social, and email. And where we're very, very excited about that email piece, I would say that's going to be kind of the next level for the company. And it's it's coming down the pipeline here pretty soon. So we're pumped about that. So today, have people been using like a MailChimp integration or something? It depends. Yeah. Um, and the reason I said it depends is MailChimp, Constant Contact, some of the post- popular ones, mm-hmm. uh, some are approved, some are not. So yeah. if you're depending on that, they might have another yeah. solution. It always comes down to compliance. and that's, comes down and to that, compliance so, and what they so, want to endorse. So it depends, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great. And uh, one of the things is... I've been with advisor websites almost five years now in a month or two. At the beginning at advisor websites, I was essentially a sales guy. And a lot of the time I had to convince advisors, firms, even marketing people within the firm, why they need a website, why it's important. Why they need a website? It was honest. Oh my God. What year am I living in? Well, I think what, 2019 now? Why do you need a phone number? Like it's like where, what world are we living in? Like the first thing people do when they get referred to anything, their own natural behavior, the vast majority of us is either to whip out a phone or go to a computer and go to Google. Let me let me walk you down this path. This is how a lot of the conversations go. I don't need a website. This is me talking to an advisor, right? I don't need a website. I grow my business by word of mouth the referrals. My instant response every single time. Where do you think they're going? Who? Like where and do you then think? Light bulb. Yeah, That's exactly. Like it's it's in it's. I kid you not. And I've actually had like people say, yeah, you don't got to refer to this guy. But he's like a ghost. I can't find him anywhere. Yep. Right? And, and you lose credibility. Are well, you even legit? Well, this is the thing, right? I mean, you can't be, first of all, A, you can't be bothered. Yep. B, are you making enough money 
to just to basically afford a website, which yep. frankly, at eight bucks a month on Squarespace, how the heck can you not? Totally. Right? We're, we're more than that, I'll be honest. But yes, no, you it's are. still very affordable. No, you are. But I would say, no, there's a difference. So, yeah. I mean, like again, so we are looking at, look, let's consider Squarespace and Wix, the McDonald's of basically free websites or, or cheap websites, yep. right? You have built something vertical specific that mm -hmm. provides value to that niche market. Totally. And therefore, you can command a premium price for it, a totally. premium but reasonable price. I mean, I've got your pricing. Let's just talk about that. Let's, let's not sure. hide from that. So tell me what your packages cost at, because I, I think it's re really, really reasonable. Yeah, so I mean, range-wise, there's basically three different offerings we have. A okay. subscription-based model. The differentiated comes from features and service level. But they, you know, they started around the $70, $80 mark, and they mm -hmm. go up to 300 ish um, If you are, as part of one of our broker-dealers or preferred or preferred partner with the organization, you get some discounted pricing potentially available to you. Yeah. So that's that's the ongoing annual cost. So it's, it's that number is on a monthly basis, and there is always like a setup cost. Once again, for 400, 500 to five hundred to a thousand bucks, and sometimes that's discounted as well. So it's extremely economical. And I've spoken to people that are like we hired a local agency, we paid five, ten, twenty grand. I have that call, oh, yeah. and they don't even know that something this economical. Is and out it's there. like usually like a WordPress site that's got to be almost always. Yeah, and yeah. there's no. I mean, I've been on. I've been using Squarespace for years, right? Simply yep. because I, I actually, funnily You're enough, more tech savvy. Though. Well, I'm tech savvy. Well, it's, you don't even have to be tech savvy. It's funnily enough. I met you guys the first time at uh, the FA, uh, the FPA, FPA conference in the U.S. Yep. about three there. years ago. Yep. And I had literally just finished. Was that Baltimore? No, it was, it was Boston. Uh, Boston. Yes, I've been to both those uh, Seattle, Baltimore, if we Boston. Met there, right? we so probably, I had someone look at my site. Yeah. So, so basically, that would have hundred percent been me then. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that was hundred percent. Yeah, That's funny. Okay, that hundred percent. Good to meet you again. There we go. Um, so basically, I had literally just finished uh, having a very accomplished marketing uh, buddy of mine basically build our site on Squarespace, and awesome. it's, I mean, our site's gorgeous, yep. right? And I literally said, uh, maybe I made a mistake. Like, let me totally. see. And I think I think your feedback at the time was, look, the honest truth is, you guys did a fantastic job, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But that was with a guy who basically has got tons of experience in the financial industry with marketing. Yep. And an advisor was tech savvy enough to know it. And we actually had all the content ready to go. So not everybody's there. So I'm guessing the on the onboarding cost for you guys is essentially more so, are you guiding them through the initial setup for of sure. the site? For sure. And you touched on a few points. Like you had a, a, a person you knew, yes. you had content ready. Yes. These things can all be roadblocks for a lot of firms. Huge. They don't have they don't have that. Where do I even person. start? Like how, what, what pages do I so, even use? So the nice thing is we can grow with your business. We have clients who start at the, the traction plan, which is a bit of a lower end. And mm -hmm. then as they grow, they want more stuff, want more features. They upgrade, they go yeah. up. But yeah, in that onboarding process, you know, we have a library of templates that can be personalized, mm -hmm. but that's what reduces the cost. You're not paying five grand, now you're paying 500 or a thousand. Yeah. And then we can put your branding, your colors, your nav structure. We have some canned content you, that's offered to you if you want to use to talk about, you know, all that stuff can be very turnkey. Mm -hmm. And then for the firms that want to do more, hey, you can do that absolutely as well. But yeah, we, we, we do help hold your hand through it all. Um, I wouldn't say we're there, you know, we're there through the initial build stuff, but the actual value comes at post going live. Like we have a support team. You can send in requests, get updates done for you. We have knowledge-based articles with tutorials so you can learn the platform. You get access to one-on-one -on -one training sessions with our customer success team. It's all part of it. So it's a, it's a huge value add to firms, especially the ones who need that extra help. Yeah, and it's been years since I looked at your interface, but I remember being, being very, very intuitive. It was literally, do you want to add a module for this? And you click on a button boom, and boom. It, would, it would go in there. Mm -hmm. And then the client, and then basically, I mean, for advisors who are not tech savvy listening to this, the honest truth is on any of these platforms that are developed properly, if you can write into, type into Word and format text. You're looking for a sales job? Am I right? No, joking. That's, that's one of the go-tos. It's yeah. like if you can type into a Word document, oh, I, that's our platform. I give, I give presentations on advisor technology all the time. And yeah. I'm always talking about like, there's literally, I even say like, if you if you do not do not have a beautiful website at this point, yep. it's because you simply just are too lazy to give a damn and inform yourself. Yeah. Because frankly, it is literally, it is the easiest it's ever been. You compare, you know, we roll back the clock 10 years. Yep. And you're talking that 10 to 20 grand spent was the base norm. That was right? the entry point. Exactly, right? Now you're talking, you know, a couple hundred bucks to get set up. And you're talking less than a thousand, about a thousand dollars a year for the base package that's specifically designed for people in their industry. And by the way, also communicates with their back office to yep. get sign off. And you get, you know, you get all the archives. So you get audited. It's all there for you. It's it's great. Um, and one of the things, you know, for or the U.S. audience out there, one of the most common in CRM systems, and it's a partner of ours, is Redtail. Yeah, no kidding. And we you know we, we we integrate with them. <laughs> so does everybody. But yeah. No, but that's what. But I mean, <laughs> so not but that's, a WordPress yeah. or a Squarespace. No, well, data. not. But no, but, I mean. But I mean, yes, our competitors. No, I mean, but that's exactly that makes you unique. I yes. mean, like who else does that with with a CRM it's, system? Exactly. And you know, there's other ones coming down the pipeline. I can't speak about yet, but there's a 
use well, case. Well, there's only two others that we're talking about. <laughs> well, no, sorry. I'm talking about other integrations aside from Fair the CRM systems, yeah, yeah, too, yeah. but other, other tools out there. All right. I'm curious um, about that. <laughs> nudge, nudge, e- nudge, nudge, email, wink, wink. So there, there's things coming out. Okay. There. Fair yeah. enough. Fair yeah. enough. Sworn is seeking secrecy right now. So take me through what happens. I'm an advisor. I have this website. You guys have developed it. I either have a blog or, you know what, one of my staff members changed. Maybe I got a new designation or something. Yep. I want to update the website. Take me through what that looks like. Three options. One option is you can do it yourself. Use our knowledge base where there's articles and tutorials. Mm -hmm. Self-serving option. Option two is we have uh, phone support. Mm -hmm. So you can call in or you can book a one-on-one call. And the third option, which I would say is probably the most popular, is our ticket request. So in your dashboard, you can request help. So window pops up. You fill out what you need help with. Certain files need to be attached. You do that, hit submit. Our turnaround time is one to two business days. Okay, so I understand. Let's call, let's call it the hand-holding one, okay? Yep. Now, let's get realistic here. I decide I want to do this myself. I just want to change one sentence. How long does that take me? Five seconds. Exactly. So this, I mean, don't get me wrong. Disclaimer, <laughs> pending compliance approval. <laughs> but yes, for you to actually implement that change, five seconds. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand your need to have that entire do it for me thing because I know the audience you're dealing with and yes. you know the demographics, and they're fearful of that. But frankly, I mean, it doesn't again it doesn't take much. So pending compliance approval. So let's go back to that. I submit that you know save. I've done this update. Yep. What happens on the back end? So on the on the back end, when you hit save, there's actually a send to compliance button you press. Okay. Once that gets hit, it notifies your compliance team department. XYZ Jason's site has something pending for review. They go in there. They hit approve, it, it automatically goes live. The problem can happen is where compliance, you don't know, they might be backlogged one week. Yeah. And some that should take a day to approve might take two, three, four. But I mean, we, we they get notified. Yeah. We're on top of that stuff. So a ticketing feature. Let me know how far I'm down the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, um, yeah. So, I mean, essentially what you're doing is you've almost created what you're doing is on the back end, you're creating a copy of that entry, a new one that's basically sitting in a sandbox that gets mm-hmm. bumped over to compliance for approval. Mm-hmm. Essentially and then, draft mode. And boom, exactly. Yep. So exactly. So overall, you've done companies like, like yours have done a lot to frankly make this a heck of a lot less intimidating, thank goodness. Mm-hmm. And it's I still dwell on the entire I don't need a website thing. So oh. to, yeah, to go back to that for a quick yeah, second. Let, let's let's spend time on that because yeah, it's important. Absolutely. So <laughs> as I mentioned a few minutes ago, like that was the big narrative. I don't need one i get my business by referrals why do i need one what's the point yeah. now that's changed as we talked about you know what's the first thing they do they go look on google they search you up yeah. now the more of the message i like to talk when i speak to uh, firms or advisors is you want to your digital marketing i think a big mindset is let's get leads let's get leads get new business but it's also actually converting those referrals exactly so in your i sometimes feel like that's almost missed in mm-hmm. the messaging or the way the websites are laid out so i always try to bring that to the forefront if your number one way of growing your business which is the case for almost every advisor's referral of word of mouth absolutely you want to have your website attack uh, connecting that audience so it's great and the second part of it is like i don't need a website i get referrals well you make it hard for yourself to get more referrals where are they going to send you yeah you don't know the ones that you're looking at you're failing to look at the graveyard of evidence yep. right you don't even know how many bodies what? gave exactly. up exactly because they couldn't find you but oh there's financial planning in my area Click. yep yep and they so you know what you're going to lose them to your competitor because they'll they'll yeah. that's the first one that shows up or the one of the first ones on yeah. google or whatever that's where they go it's not the people who are who are coming to meet you it's the people who stop out. that you have no idea and you would never know them yep. exactly so you want to also make it easy for your clients to give you out as a referral exactly. so if you do hey here's their website website that's one line that could be a text message that could be in an email but it makes it very easy for them to to do that absolutely so that's great yeah and then i mean um going on that path a little bit further big thing now the last few years now is social you hear this term social selling things like that it's funny i and i think a lot would agree in in this industry that linkedin is probably the best in terms of connecting with your clients and all that kind of fun stuff it's also the least toxic but yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) least amount of garbage Uh, linkedin it's you know obviously set up to be more professional absolutely but i was speaking to a a us-based advisor about two or three years ago and he really kind of changed my perspective of it and he was a big fan of facebook and uh, i'm I'm like how come and he's like well on facebook that's the one platform where i can connect with my clients kids and the other generations which is my next wave of potential business. He's How like, old are these kids? Because a lot of kids- Well, they're, they're, they're starting their professional careers. I was going to say, they better be in their 30s, otherwise yeah. they're not on Facebook. Yeah, so they're starting yeah. their professional yeah. careers. And it's, it's actually interesting. And he's like, now they get familiar with me or my firm and my brand a little. Yeah. And that actually really made sense to me. But I mean, I, I look at these things all as minimum checkboxes. Like these are table stakes now. Oh, yeah. I, I, a social presence is table stakes. A website is, still, is table stakes. Because again, if people are going to look for you in any one capacity, they're going to look in these various spots, mm-hmm. right? If you don't exist in them. Yep. I mean, especially touting LinkedIn on this one. Like where else, if, you, if you've accomplished a bunch of stuff, where else do you get to put your resume in front of someone mm-hmm. without looking pretentious, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, 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 it's incredibly powerful. And, and Jason, you're, 
clearly a, a, an advisor, a lot of practicing advisor. Do you, would you not agree that your first impression in most cases now is is your digital presence? 100%. Right. It's not necessarily a handshake in a business card anymore. No, it's not. I mean, like I, I even, so when I do these entire like advisor technology pieces, I talk about, okay, I kind of do it from the client journey viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So, so you're going to acquire a client somehow, right? Yep. And I give some examples. So, you know, the one example always like, okay, referral, fine. You yep. know, referral, you get it there. Then there's going to be, you know, online marketing. And I talk about SEO. Yep. Uh, I talk about social presence and I talk about, um, you know, other, other unconventional ones, such as, you know, maybe you host a podcast. Does mm -hmm. it cost that much to run? Anyone's <laughs> interested. And basically whatever it is, yep. whatever it is, I am willing to, I'm willing to bet anything. Yeah. That the vast majority of those will land on your website before they before they call you. For First sure. impression, right? So, yeah. and if anyone wants to take that that the opposite side of that bet with me, I will stake thousands of dollars on that with anyone. Yep. Right. Yep. You know, the only person now that's a caveat. A if you don't have a website, yeah. then that's not happening. Yeah. But that's the common point. So, and one of the things we've been talking about for a bit here now is the referral piece. Yep. I also have the argument, and I think it's valid, is you get referrals called by luck of the draw or or not necessarily proactively. You get them because of whatever conversations happen. Exactly. I also think a lot of firms miss out on actually trying to generate those referrals. Some of them just don't do anything with it. They don't think of, hey, if someone calls me, cool, otherwise that's yeah. it. But if you uh, if you can encourage that in some way or make that a part of your your process, it can grow your business. Absolutely. I mean, I I know a, a well known executive who basically said, you know, the equivalent. Of, you know, he goes around and asks every advisor, what's their plan for growing their business, and inevitably, nine out of ten of them say referrals with nothing else mentioned. Right. Mm -hmm. He it said, that's great. That's the equivalent of getting on your knees and praying for rain. Right. <laughs> like you're you're just hoping it happens. Yeah. Right. And it's going to happen if you do a decent job. And I still believe it's the number one way to do things. Mm -hmm. But it's all about reducing friction from the point of that referral until the point that they actually yep. are willing to come in. Yep. And I mean, it, especially if you're out there doing other things like like we said, like social media or just conventional media, whatever it is, yep. everything is going to come back to your company and your website. That's you your better hub. look professional. That's your hub. Your website is your marketing hub. It is. So talk to me about other integrations. So you talked about the CR. Let's talk about the Redtail integration first of all. So what flows through between uh, advisor websites? For and sure. Redtail? So the way that works is it's, it's meant to be a lead generation tool and almost a bit of a prospecting feature. So if you have a contact form on your website, contact us, tell a friend, those sorts of things. When a visitor on your website completes that form, it actually puts them into your Redtail database. You can build a, a workflow inside of a Redtail to create a task to call them and mm -hmm. start, you know, that start down, a that drip marketing campaign, whatever yeah, it might drip be. Drip campaign to that, right? Yeah. So that gets automated. If you don't have Redtail and you're using, say, a Salesforce or something else out there, the platform has an inbuilt what we call leads manager tool. So it's essentially like a mini CRM or repository that keeps all those contact form submissions can be batch exported into an Excel file, and then you can import it into your other serum as well. Do you guys One integrate, extra step. Do you guys integrate into Zapier yet? No, Get we we are. That's, <laughs> yeah, Zapier is amazing. I use it for for the marketing side of the business quite often to plug yeah. things together. And it's, I'm it's actually really just cool. I'm even overwhelmed by the amount of things they yeah, can do. I'm just yeah. like, I need a Zapier consultant just to. It, it could be honestly a thriving profession. It really could. Yeah. I, I've actually said like you could just you could just master all the key yep. like the key ones there. Yeah, you could be a pretty productive consultant there. Absolutely. Yeah. So we talked about CRM. CRM integration. You mentioned social. Tell me how social integrates into this. Yeah, experience. so I'll, I'll kind of dial it back to the, the start of with social. There was a lot of, I think, roadblocks and friction with compliance about using social. It stems from they, they essentially can't control too much of it because if there's back and forth dialogue, that can be red flags. And then slowly, slowly, they've started to allow certain ones and not certain ones and, and things like that. Now, with uh, social, there's a few ways we do it. So we can actually help you set up your social profiles. That's a big ask. So I don't know how to do it. What where do I start? What do I put? Things like that. So we have your that. name. Sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. But that's a concern. So we have an, we have like add-on features available. It's like uh, services like SEO, social things like this. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a service level there under with our add-ons that you can we help you set up your social. And we have another level of that where it's more we actually help you actively post as well. But aside from the add-ons, as part of our um, our middle tier plan, which we call our expansion plan, which is our I would say definitely our most our most popular one. Uh, you have a social media automation feature in there. And the way it works is it automatically publishes an article to your website and then out to your social media as well. Uh, LinkedIn and Twitter today, Facebook's coming down. But that's fully automated. Set it and forget it. It's mm -hmm. done. It's done for you. How are you getting this content? We have our own content library our clients have access to. Excellent. Yeah. So you can uh, you get that as part of your subscription. Now on the traction yeah. level, you just get website auto publishing. On the expansion level, you get web plus social. I can see why broker deals would love you. I mean, you're basically almost an all inclusive outsourced solution. I mean, you guys yep. 
will you guys will provide the website you'll design the you know like i'm looking at the the list of add-ons here you'll refresh all the content you'll provide everything up to logo design yep basically build their website from scratch make it editable so they can do it on the fly give yep. them back in compliance support do the seo to help and the social media stuff to help drive business to them let me touch on the the uh, seo piece there sure uh, for a sec so seo for those listening it's search and optimization essentially get yourself found easier more traffic on your website that's an, one of the add-on services we provide. The funny thing I find is a lot of advisors go, oh, I got this website and I get no business. And I'm like, well. It's what like, have you done with the website? It's, it's like you, you build a house and don't tell anyone your address. I, I like to say it's like it's like you get all dressed up for the prom and you sit in the corner. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, there you go. I, I, oh, no one's asked me nope. to dance. Well, maybe you should go ask. Yeah, put yourself out there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's interesting yeah. when we hear that and they're like, I don't need a website. See, no one comes to it. It's like little things. Put in your email signature. Put in your stationaries. Put on your business card. Yeah. And it blows my mind how people don't even do that. They go, oh my God, that's a great idea. I never thought about that. That's a great idea. It's it's like, you know, yeah. branding 101 of marketing 101. So there's that stuff you can, you can do by yourself. But then, yeah, if you want to take it to the next level, some of the add-on package where we, you know, we optimize content and pages for targeting keywords mm-hmm. and help you with that. It, it's, it's a great way to ge- generate some traffic. Oh, fantastic. And on our website, advisorwebsites.com, little plug here, resources section. We put a ton of educational content specific to advisors and marketing their businesses and firms. We just put out in March a SEO ebook. Hmm. It's great, great content in there. So I highly suggest people head over there and check that out as well. Absolutely, especially if they're doing it themselves. Exactly. So do you guys also offer blog integration? So as part of the platform, actually, you get a blog. It's it's Perfect. in the box, out of the box, sorry. Once again, it's you can use our content library to publish things there or write your own stuff as well. Interesting. Yeah. Good, good, good. So what don't you do? <laughs> so at this very moment, the thing we don't do that gets asked of us is the email piece, but that's yeah. coming down the pipeline. Um, one of the things, it's it's a funny one. It's It's been a back and forth discussion at the company is uh, PPC, pay-per-click advertising, Google ads, Facebook ads. Really? Yeah. Have you had any experience with it? Not on my own site. No. But in general, yes. Um, I just Give me I, an example. Well, no, but here's like... Other websites I've helped people with. But no, here's my entire thing. Why are you providing advertising? Are you, so hold on, maybe I'm wrong. Is this on their own site or is this pay-per-click driving to their site? That's the same thing to me. I'm sorry, I'm no, 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 sorry. Here. So am I, is there an ad on my site or is there? Sorry, no, it's an ad to drive people. Oh, okay, so, fair enough. So there's an ad on, on Facebook. Yeah, so fair Google enough, you're running, you're running Google AdWords yeah. programs and stuff like that. So yeah, no, I've done that manually myself. Yep. That can be a daunting challenge, right? Because a couple of things. First off, and this is where uh, the concept of niche marketing really plays out, is that if you want to go for broad market terms, it is expensive, expensive, hugely expensive. So if you're thinking you're going to spend 50 to 100 bucks a month, that's maybe two clicks on the term financial planning in your small region. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're looking for something bizarre, like take something from I've heard from various like kids' podcasts or something like that, like Bash Fishing Champion Financial Planning or yep. something like that, yep. you can get that for, for cents, on the dollar. right? Yeah. For cents. And don't laugh because there's some pretty big purses in those competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way I look at it is if you're out there fighting the major banks and major broker dealers, it's a losing battle. They're the ones paying top dollar for those. Are you sure you're not looking for a sales job? <laughs> you, you, you literally speak some of the things I, I say hilarious. quite often. No, I, that, I live and breathe it. Yeah, man. yeah, it's awesome. It. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so that we did test out PPC with a yeah. group of like a pilot program with a group of firms. Other beginning of 2018, anyways, in the last year or so, mixed results. Overall, I didn't feel comfortable. The company didn't feel comfortable. That's something we want to continuously offer. What we it's know is- It's a pretty competitive space. It is. I mean, like, unless, again, I think this is, and this has got to be client specific, right? Yep. You have a broad market advisor, it ain't going to work. No. You have some sort of story you can you can latch on to. We don't have to be that abstract. It could be something like women entrepreneurs under the age of 40, for yep. example, right? Yep. You want to target that niche. Yep. Then again, now we're talking pennies per click as opposed to massive dollars per click. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the other factor is it's for the ones listening as well as it is geographically based. So you actually, Huge. you target your uh, certain counties, zip codes, postal codes, et cetera. So if you're in a highly competitive or saturated area, those clicks are costing that much more potentially. Don't I if, know it. Yeah. And if you're, but if you're, you know, living somewhere, smaller town, things like that, yeah, you might get a win there too. But overall, like one of the trends I saw was you see, definitely see traffic spikes. That website's yeah. getting more attention. But what you end up seeing as a result is higher bounce rate or less average time on site. 
So people will just hit the homepage and leave. They're, yeah. not, they're not connecting with the page. Well, and that's the other thing is too, is that you guys having to do that on scale, I think would be a real challenge. That was a huge factor. Right? Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's too, not scalable, really. It's not scalable, right? Because it has to be, it has to understand the, the niche market of the advisor. Yep. And it's got to custom tailor those words specifically to that. Yep. Then it's got to ma measure bounce rates and activity from those from those word terms yep. and iterate over time. So yep. it's not something that I think is, is again, like we said, scalable. If you're going to find someone, it better be, I mean, there's plenty of people emailing my inbox every other week about that sort of stuff. Totally. But, uh, you know. Can, can I share a quick story? By all means. So I was at a, a, a massive national conference for um, a huge organization in the U.S. in February in San Diego. And I had about 20 or 30, they call them consulting appointments. So people would schedule 20, 30 minute one-on-one -on -one sessions with myself or one of my colleagues. One big firm, they mm -hmm. said they spent 60 grand on PPC in the last six months. And what was the payout? Zero clients. I can't believe it. And I did not not believe either. I'm like, that made, like I would have almost uh, predicted that. Yeah, that's interesting. And I, I often wonder just how jaded the average web browser is becoming now because you know, it used to be that Google would put these ads off to the side. So yep. organic search was present and everything else, you know, here's here's the, the paid for advertising. Yep. Then it's like, hey, let's put them actually in there because maybe we'll get more clicks yep. and sure enough, it worked. Yep. And then now to find an organic search term, you got to scroll down like six or seven <laughs> links yep. Yep. minimum. Yep. And it's like, do you? I, I start to think that we're, we're working towards a day where I enter a search term and skip to the second page. My philosophy, or that might be true stronger of a word on this is, we're not selling toasters. You guys aren't selling toasters and no. advisors. You're actually like literally taking people's life savings and, and protecting them and helping them grow. Yep. So are they going to really, really go through a, a random ad on a Google search for that kind of stuff? I don't think so. Well, and that's the thing, right? Is that the way you really get the right advisor client combination is when they connect on some sort of just deep level mm -hmm. over service versus life need, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and the fact that that person's very experienced at handling people in that, in that scenario. Mm -hmm. And how do you get across that, that across with a couple of words on a paid for advertising? Totally. It's, right? it's, so it, it's a very slippery slope yeah. that way. I would, I would rather let the commodified banks and others fight over, you know, $50 clicks, mm -hmm. whatever the heck it's costing these days, probably not that high and being prestigious, yeah. but nevertheless, I, I would rather that than worry about this sort of thing. But I still think that there is, and I've seen it with some niche. If you have a, a hyper-specific niche, yep. I think there's an opportunity. Yeah, there is. And it's it's a little bit what you're saying. It's a little bit quality versus quantity. Exactly. Right? People might want to see, oh, I got... 300%, 400% increase in traffic, but oh, it yeah. turned into a real business. Oh, when we were doing it, I think when we stopped doing it, my traffic dropped 50%, but my bounce rates stopped, like, yep. fell through the floor and yep. the average time of the site went up. Yep. So yep. It's, it's a challenge. Yeah. So what else are people asking you for? So my my biggest trend I see, and I something I'm a big fan of is, is videos. It's starting to get more and more used. And I think, and sorry, the big key with the videos, don't make them movies, not some, no need to make a crazy Hollywood production either. A couple minutes max, something very easily yep. digestible. People can, you know, if they're on the bus or the train, they can just click on it. You're not trying to get them to watch a 30 minute presentation. So videos are awesome. You could honestly get a tripod stand from Walmart and do it on your iPhone. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, 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 it's not the technological No, there's no now. challenges I mean, or no cost I, I that I'd say that the two concerns, I think I have a couple concerns in that. I have a friend who's incredibly successful doing this in the real estate market with videos and, yeah with video yeah. like he's, he's done quite well but he, he does a very quirky style video and it works for him right people love that stuff people do it depends i think you have to know your niche yep right that's the first thing i think the post-production still is can be costly right so you can still i mean you could probably find people on fiverr to do it at a very mm -hmm. reasonable rate i also think that the problem is i've seen it so poorly executed so many times because mm -hmm. it turns into one talking head yeah. Right. Like the reality is if you're not going to do it right, don't do it at all because yep. no one wants to be bored. So you yep. better have like you better have graphics that that splice in. You better have video. You better you better have a plan for this. Right. So yep. it's the time to invest. So that's that's something, you know, if you you're get, gonna, you get a university kid to do it. Yeah, that's true. You don't. Yeah. Hey. You don't need to overcomplicate it. And for those who even found the website Fiverr with two R's, I think. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. literally you can find people to do almost any job for peanuts. Yep. It's great. But yeah, no, so videos, videos is great because, and the videos are awesome because they're so multi-purpose. You can put them on your website, yeah. but you can put them in emails, you can put them on social, you can put them at different places, yeah. right? And it's, it's a great tool. And once again, it's something that can be used for referral. If yeah. one of your clients gets your email with your video in it, and it's about a topic, they go, you can forward to their friend, yeah. hey, this is my advisor talking about RSPs or 
401k Absolutely. in the US, whatever that looks like. And well, have you, um, I mean, have you seen the use of Bang Bang picking up anywhere? Because I keep on, I've had yes. a couple of advisors. That's a great little video. The tool. video newsletter tool. Yeah, yeah. Well, video emails. So people will have the, um, they'll have a client meeting or advisor me or whatever meeting. And they will, instead of sending a typed up summary of that meeting, they will just do a video, video recording of it. Much more personal. Yep. You're more likely to sit there and digest it than you are a big length text yep. and faster. Yep. Right? I mean, you still got to write your notes and everything like that, but you yep. don't have to write a big formal email. So yep. Yep. something I actually have my agenda to look at. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting you asked that. I have maybe six months ago, someone brought that to my attention. I had a peek at it and I'm like, this is pretty interesting. And it's, it's, I think I definitely like the next wave of trend or the next wave people are going with this so. stuff. People prefer visual. Yep. That's what it comes down yeah. to. I mean, and you, you know, you might talk through so many things in a meeting and you forget what you forget. So if you have that, it's always there and living, you can go back to it. Well, that's the thing, right? It creates a record for them as well that yep. they can keep. It's a little bit easier to digest. And, and I think it's a great way to show your client or your prospect that you were listening. Yeah. Right. So it's just a more intimate conversation as opposed to this long email. Right. Yep. And it's not like that. I think there's oftentimes we have this like, oh, I got to you know, write the email tonight or I'll get to it tomorrow. Right. Because you got to sit back and think it all through. Mm -hmm. If you take notes in the meeting, you yep. can literally just have a stream of consciousness conversation with with the client yep. on the video and it's done. Yeah. Good. If you uh question for you, Jason. So if you had to, as an advisor, if you said what most what would you predict most advisors are reluctant to with the website or build going going on with marketing? Aside from, let's say, I don't need one, that narrative. I think the I don't need one is in many ways the lie yep. that they tell themselves. Because? Right? Fear. Fear. They don't know where to start is the yep. first thing, right? Yep. They are afraid of the cost because they heard of some nightmare scenario. Yep. They don't know what they're going to write. They don't know how they're going to put together. And the honest truth is, is that I know many advisors who are top performers and, and do incredible jobs. But I know tons of other advisors who, frankly, have no clearly defined, defined value proposition, right? Yep. And if you can't passionately talk about what you do, and if you can't populate a website ten times over with that content, yeah. you have a problem with your business model, yep. right? Yep. So I think I think some of it is is them having to face the, the fact that the emperor may have no clothes on. Yeah. Um, so that's it. I think a combination yeah. of fear and a combination of the lack of, of solidity of their message. The other, I agree. The other one I, I get a lot of is. Um, where we hear a lot of it with the company is time because they're especially like a one person operation they don't have a person yeah. and my but my answer to them yeah. is there's technology you've set it up yeah but so much of it can be automated oh, invest absolutely. a bit of time up front to set it up but that's the it, thing is that and i don't buy that argument for a second and the problem is is that too often this industry has been taught you need to spend all your time for the client 99 percent of the yep, service, them, service them. Yep. But you know what that's not working on your business it's the old on your business versus in your business argument yep. you invest a weekend a day a week i don't care if it's a week in a solid website getting that up and running how many years does it pay dividends? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, mine, like I said, three years ago, mm -hmm. we basically, yeah, so it's been over three, it's probably a good, it's gonna have its fourth birthday this summer. Congratulations. Right? Thank you. <laughs> it still looks gorgeous, yep. right? Yeah, it's great. But the content, the text has been updated, the pictures of, of staff have been updated as they turned around. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, it's been the investment since that, you know, big lead in time, which was probably two solid weeks worth of work back yep. and forth, yep. has been four years. Right. With maybe yep. less than a week's worth of upkeep. Yeah, it's, it's great. And right? that's the thing. I don't buy the time argument anymore. No. Either. Yeah. It's like saying you don't have time for a CFP, really. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't yeah. have time to, to get the skill set and then yeah. have it pay off dividends for yeah. the rest of your life. You're looking at the dollar today versus the ten dollars tomorrow. And it's it's crazy because even with the say the cost of a website, you get one client in two years off your website it's paid for itself. Oh, without failure. Ten, without like, failure. Yeah. But it's just it's also one of these things that like, I mean, how much longer do you think you can exist like that before people start wondering? They already here's the ask yourself this. What client wants to feel their advisors behind the times? You know what's I'll answer this way. So answer is zero. Exactly. And I'll answer this way. It's that next wave of of clients. So your current clients kids essentially yeah. if you if they go and you look archaic and out of the times they don't want to you're work done. with you you're done you lose that in business. a heartbeat you're done so you got to look modern and it's things it's not hard to do it it's not it's it's the tools are all available to yeah. you and it's funny i mean i'm not you get a test and you're looking across and i'm not exactly on the old age of the advisor scale yeah but even i have trouble you know sometimes relating to the younger to the client for the sure kids graduating university yeah. right it's just this different different life stage for sure but at least I still get feedback on like when we have to set stuff up, it's like, why can't I do this digitally? Why mm -hmm. can't I do this remotely? Right? Like you talk about like client meetings? Client meetings, like yep. we can do remote. Yeah, we're like, oh, we could totally do that remotely, but I mean, yep. we're still waiting for full digital onboarding, which is yep. supposed to come this year. Yeah. But the point is, is that, you know, when we don't leverage those technologies to people who become digital, who are digital natives and yep. used to that in everything, it's a turnoff. And they wonder, you know, it's the first chink in the armor. Not having a website to them means you basically don't even exist. Yep, it's so true. It's interesting too, because 
a lot of head offices, so like broker head offices in the States or Canada, they got a lot of feedback from their advisor. It's so competitive out there. You're not giving us the right tools, the right resources, yeah, et cetera. Well, I get so frustrated with that because yeah. it's just like take some responsibility for your own business yeah. at the same time. But yeah. continue. So so <laughs> there, there, that's definitely yeah. a part of it. But the, actually the other part of it is there's always been the scare of like compliance, compliance, compliance. Yeah. And all the risks or, you know quote unquote risk with that. But now they're realizing that actually if advisor are jumping from broker dealer to broker dealer because that one lets you do more, lets you market yeah. better. And you and now everyone's kind of leveling their game yeah. up because I, I won't say that's a race to the bottom. It's a race to the most efficient. Yep. Right. Yeah. And it's I mean I've seen I've literally seen some dealerships say, no, no, you have to clear every tweet bias. It's very true. It's actually like, I'd say almost the majority is that. That's but that's insane. Yeah. Okay. Like I totally understand if we cross the line into investment advice. Yeah. Right. I want to retweet a Warren Buffett quote on buying hamburgers on sale. Right. Yeah, yeah. Please tell me why that's necessary. Yeah. Right? So how that's changing is there's tools out there that you would have to basically use if you're part of certain broker dealers where they let you tweet or post on yeah. social as you wish, but they, they buffer they, it they, or they monitor. So yeah. if certain words on your tweet, red yeah. flags you. I've sat through those demos. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Know so those like, are yeah. out there. And I mean, at least it's better. You can do it in real time now. Oh, absolutely. So that does help. But yeah, it is. It's interesting um, because if you can't tweet in real time, what's like you're already behind? Why are you doing it? Well, exactly, right? It's it's uh, it's incredibly timely. Yeah. So before we wrap up, a couple a uh, couple questions. First of all, and these are the ones I ask everybody just to get you thinking and, yeah. and uh, making you make you think of bigger dreams than what you have today. Yeah. You can change one thing about your company, the industry you're working in, whatever it is. What would it be? That's a really good question. So company or industry. Whatever you want, company, industry, world, you know, not world peace is too big of a, that's too big. Yeah, right. Yeah. So actually I, I, the company thing is, if I'll answer both. With the company, it's uh, it's the prioritization of what's what's needed. Sometimes, you know, we, some group might think this is more important than this thing. Mm. So really knowing which way to go. Yeah. We've made great choices and we made not so great choices, but I think that's just part of the process. That's every not, not everything's a winner. Knowing, knowing where you got to focus your time and yeah. effort is is the hardest thing, especially, especially in a, in a tech company, in a young one where you're, literally being pulled in so many directions and especially when you serve as such a diverse base they yep. all want their specific yellow widget or whatever it is and yep, yep. It, could, it could it'll either crush you or you'll make the right decisions and it'll it'll pay off yep so what do you think has been the biggest challenge uh, in scaling this business and getting it out there getting in front of the right people i wouldn't say it's a, it's even a challenge it's, it's an ongoing process we work with over 100 broker dealers today yeah we work with a lot i think though some of them try to have I'll actually speak to more on the Canadian side because because we do work in both markets. The Canadian side of the equation, a lot of the bigger organizations that out there, they have, try to keep a lot more brand control. And that becomes very frustrating for the firms and the advisors. So they oh, go, yeah. they go, I don't want to do it. Like it's too much, too much. Well, it's even worse. I mean, the regulators themselves don't recognize, don't want to recognize sub brands within some of these brands, right? Mm. So, I mean, I walk a very fine line the way I, I handle mine and I'm within the lines, but man, it's, you know, it's, there's certain things I can't talk about my website because it's yep. regulated under my dealer. Mm -hmm. And guess what? This mm -hmm. is an outside business mm -hmm. activity and it's, it's so, frustrating. So because of that, your firm starts to lose that personalization differentiation, mm -hmm. which kind of blend in a little. Well, and, and this is especially in an independent space, both in Canada and the US, when you have, you know, sub-branding under it. You don't stop thinking you have one brand. You don't. You, yeah. have, you have hundreds of yep. brands, yep. right? How do you support those individual brands yep. and realize that your brand should be helping advisors, not the general public? Yep. Yep. Right? Hang on. And I actually, I think if I was the, you know, I, you know, if I was to run a independent dealership myself, mm -hmm. I kid you not, I would have a rule. You are not using the company's brand as your primary brand. Yep. Why? Yep. Because frankly, that's we're not the client facing. You, you are. are. You need yep. to figure that out and we'll help you. Yep. So it, it's an interesting predicament, but yeah, it makes yep. lots of sense. So what is the last question? What is it that excites you the most about this job, what you're working on? You know, what gets you up at, out of bed in the morning? You know, that's, I love that. And at the company we are we're doing some hiring right now. So I've been going through a lot of interviews. And one of the common questions candidates ask me back is why do you like working here? And why, and why have you been here so long, et cetera. And I always say, you know what? No day is the same. I couldn't do the same thing day in, day out. That would get boring for me. Yeah. So, you know, I, I get to, I'm lucky enough in this position I'm in where I, you know, I impact and influence a few different areas of the business. So, you know, that brings new challenges, new things every day, and new opportunities. So that keeps me going. And it's one of those things where marketing is always evolving. So whether it's how you do email marketing to web, all that. So it's always trying to stay on top of the new trends, get educating. Yep. So it doesn't get dull that way. It's fun. And, you know, even back in the day, a lot of times firms were like, do you know, seminars or dinners and golf yep. things. And they start, they realize that's expensive, not the best return. And, and that game's know, been played out. Like it, it's been done a yep, million times yep. over. I still get these cards in the mail and I wonder how these guys turn a profit Oops, off some, it. Some, some, so it's, it's fun to see some, or interesting to see some of that stuff go by the wayside. And now 
the more digital stuff in the world yeah. I live in. So it's that's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. Well, this has been fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. Hopefully you get some traffic out of this. And honestly, uh, for those of you who don't have a beautiful website, get your heads out of your butts. And <laughs> I mean, honestly, for the price point we're talking about, there's there's no excuse. And thank you yet again. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And be sure to check us out at uh, advisorwebsites.com. Advisor with an O, websites with an S. And yeah, we can definitely connect there. Connect me on LinkedIn. I look forward to chatting with some of you. Perfect. All right, thanks. Take thanks. care. Thanks. So that was my interview with Natish Verma. As I said in the podcast, and I am dead serious, if you don't have a beautiful website at this point, there is no bloody excuse. So I highly encourage anyone who hasn't done that yet to please take a hard look at what Advisor Websites is doing. And until next time, I'm Jason Pereira. As always, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever it is you get your podcast. Take care. This podcast was brought to you by Woodgate Financial, an award-winning financial planning firm catering to high net worth individuals and their families. To learn more, go to woodgate.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play, or find more episodes at fintechimpact.co.